Up comes Shannon Walsh from Dean Magnus School. Uh, I like Shannon's interests because she enjoys music, talking, food, sleeping and weekends. Who doesn't love a weekend? Uh, she does not, however, like tomatoes or insects. Uh, she would like to be a paediatrician, a doctor or a detective. Give her a huge round of applause for Shannon. Imagine being a butterfly. On average, they flap their wings about 12 times a second. That's 24 people dead. If a butterfly fluttered its wings in Brazil, then there would be a tornado in Texas seven weeks later. This describes the butterfly effect. In 1963, Edward Lawrence came up with a theory on how small events lead to big outcomes. Take the assassination of the Archduke Franz Ferdinand in 1914. He was on a trip to Serbia when his driver took the wrong turn into a theater. It just so happened that Gavrilo Princip, a Serbian rebel, was on the same road. He pulled out his revolver and, bang, shot the Archduke. If it wasn't for this tiny mistake that the driver had made, World War I and subsequently World War II may have never happened. At first, Lawrence's theory was laughed at. People didn't believe that a butterfly could flap its wings, set molecules of air that then go on to move other molecules of air, that then go on to move other molecules of air, that then go on to create a tornado. Because this was a new way to look at tiny catalysts, it hung around like a bad smell until the 1990s, where science professors finally proved the theory to be correct. This was new. The theory didn't just stay true to butterflies, that it worked with every form of moving matter, including us. The name of the effect stuck. We use it to describe any big catalyst that causes something big. In each of your cells is DNA. In each bit of your DNA is a gene that helps regulate cell growth. This gene is called proto-oncogene. If a proto-oncogene mutated, it would become a faulty gene and would become permanently turned on, meaning that the cell would start to divide uncontrollably. This is then called an oncogene. If the cell divides without any regulation, it could cause a tumour, which then goes on to cancer and possibly someone's death. You are a very small part of the world. We all are. But even the smallest of actions from the smallest of moving matter can create ripples that change the future. We can't anticipate these ripples, but we can still go around knowing that our actions have a storm of activity waiting for them. History is full of small events that lead to big ones. Maybe one of you will do something to change the future. So next time, think before you step. Check out this cheerleading squad. Thank you, Shannon. Mega interesting. Um, my history is pretty rubbish, so learning about that there was that one kind of turning point was really interesting. Um, who would like to start off with a question? Jamie, go on. Yeah. Uh, well done. You've you've taken us right through a, a huge amount of topics and and, and journey in, in just that three minute talk. Um, I was wondering, you, going by your interests and your kind of scientific interests, what kind of ripples would you like to send out into the science world? Well, I don't really know. I think I just want people to know that they can do anything. And if I was to be like a scientist or something, I would probably try and change the way that people think about their actions. So I'd probably try and like come up with an experiment or something to prove that everything that you do has a massive impact in the future. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Sarah, you've got a question? I, I loved your historical example of, of a tiny moment in time that completely changed the course of, of, of human history. Um, in doing your research, did you come across any other examples of small ripples that had huge impacts? 
Um, yeah, there was one about how Lego was created. Go on. Um, well, this guy owned a workshop, and he was originally made like wooden houses for birds and stuff. But um, his workshop burnt down, so like he had plastic molds and stuff, and I don't know what for, but he had plastic molds, and they all melted and caused like little bricks. And then he thought, well, because I don't have any wood left, I'm going to use up my plastic. And he decided to make houses and stuff, and he started selling it. And then Lego is like a massive thing now. Amazing. No way. Good story. Uh, please put your hands together for Shannon.